After a long year of development, the Luchador class is officially out on the DMs Guild. In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of what the Luchador is, why this fits in D&D, and how to play the class. Before getting started, I just want to give a huge thank you to Mick Cortez and Terran Pounds, aka Indestructor Boy, for the awesome work they did on the PDF for the class. Mick Cortez knocked it out of the park with the art, giving each Luchador a distinct look that tied to each subclass. Also can't thank Terran enough for his feedback, encouragement, guidance, and the killer layout work that makes everything pop. You can support both of them by following the links to their work in the description and comment section. Now jumping into it, why the Luchador. I consider myself a martial main, preferring to play melee characters with limited magic but often without. Grappling and shoving are solid tools for martial classes, but I felt didn't have the support for the playstyle and fantasy surrounding it. Others have created subclass options inspired by the Luchador, but they are still tied to class fantasy and mechanics. I didn't feel these options really sold the fantasy behind the Luchador, so I set out to create a class that provided a grappling and shoving based playstyle that honored a piece of my own culture. So what is a Luchador? The class is inspired by the masked wrestlers of Mexico. Just like any wrestler, the Luchador blends athleticism with performance but what sets it apart is the mask. The mask represents an identity created by the heroics. Each mask is unique to the luchador, drawing inspiration from animals, gods, or abstract concepts. The luchador may seem weird standing next to a dwarven fighter and an elven wizard since the luchador wasn't a thing until the modern era. This is in stark contrast with the Euro medieval fantasy that D&D is built on, or that's what people think. Modern D&D draws inspiration from western pop culture interpretations of ancient European myths in the medieval era. 5th edition is designed to have players feel super heroic. The mix of modern interpretations of fantasy and 5e super heroic design is the perfect environment for the luchador. As the luchador has the same super heroic qualities as other classes, is grounded in hand-to-hand -hand martial combat, and has its own fantasy created by Mexico's history and culture. Now let's jump into the mechanics, how do we play a luchador? The luchador is a d10 hit die martial class just like the fighter, paladin, and ranger. This will give you a solid enough health pool for you to stay in the middle of the fight. The class is meant to sit on the front line like the barbarian, fighter, and paladin, and fills a similar tanky role to those classes, but does this by singling out a target and locking them down with grapples and shoves. The luchador is a melee martial controller. Out of combat like many charisma classes, the luchador can play a solid party face. You don't have proficiency with any armor, but that is taken care of with a feature that we'll get to in just a second. You still have proficiency with simple weapons, despite the class wanting you to perform unarmed strikes alongside grapples and shoves. More importantly, you have proficiency with improvised weapons just so you can hit monsters over the head with a chair. For saving throws, you will be proficient with strength and constitution, as this is another way to represent the luchador's athletic capabilities. The idea of athletics and entertainment is represented by the available skills you can choose from when you start off. Athletics, acrobatics, history, deception, intimidation, performance, and persuasion. Pick two to start you off. I really wanted to incorporate the idea of the luchador costume in some fashion, so you will have proficiency with a disguise kit and will start off with one and a mask. This will allow you to play into the dual identity aspect of the luchador fantasy if you want to. Your closest allies will know your secret identity, but the world will know you by your stage name. Kicking off the class features, we have Lucha Libre, which will give you the tools to be effective in melee combat. Your unarmed strikes and improvised weapons will deal D6 for his damage die. Whenever you grapple a creature on your turn, you will be able to make a melee attack with an improvised weapon or unarmed strike as a bonus action. This is meant to have you continue to deal damage and not have you feeling like you are trading off grappling in place of an attack. Many grappling builds currently in 5th edition have players trade their damage to grapple a monster, which doesn't always make them feel powerful. This incentivizes you to grapple and get an attack in. The last part of this feature gives us an unarmored defense trait. Traditionally, unarmored defense features utilize dexterity, but to prevent a player from needing to put points into several ability scores to be effective for the luchador, your armor class is equal to 10 plus your strength modifier plus your charisma modifier. This further ties back to the idea of athletic performance. Unlike other classes with similar features, is your physical conditioning and captivating performance that gives you a defensive edge. Next is Technico, which takes its name from the word used to label the good guy or baby-faced luchadores. Technico is the bread and butter feature that generates and spends resources to have you performing wrestling maneuvers. The ability to generate resources was inspired by fighting games and the swiggy way wrestling matches are portrayed. A luchador builds momentum with each successful attack, which is represented by the D6 lucha die. When you roll for initiative or successfully hit a creature with an unarmed strike, grapple, or shove, you generate a lucha die. Similar to how a barbarian loses a rage feature in combat, if you don't take the attack action or become incapacitated, you lose your lucha dice at the end of the turn. I want we keeping track of the resource via dice instead of points simply because people just love rolling dice. A point system probably would have been easier to do, but plastic click class go brrrr. After accumulating all those lucha dice, you can spend them on wrestling inspired maneuvers called signature moves. I really wanted a mechanic that encouraged players to be aggressive and feel like they're comboing off. Next is Doodle, which is meant to be the damage mitigation tool that will keep you in the midst of the fight. As a reaction, when an attacker hits you with the melee attack, you can expend one lucha die and reduce the damage of the attack by the result of your lucha die plus half your luchador level rounded down. This is meant to give you the fantasy of being able to shrug off hits just like what wrestlers do when they are hit with an impactful move but don't sell it to the audience. Another thing is this feature builds tension between using your lucha 
evolution dice on signature moves or saving some to mitigate damage. Fuerte is a grappling and shoving empowerment feature inspired by a similar feature designed by Indestructible Boy for his Vanguard class. You cannot wear armor or wield a shield to have this feature active. You are considered large for the purposes of grappling and shoving and you have advantage on strength checks against any creature that is smaller than you. At 10th level you are considered huge and your movement isn't hindered as long as you are only grappling a single creature. And at 17th level you are considered gargantuan and you treat any d20 roll of 9 or lower as a 10 for any strength check or saving throw you make. This feature addresses two issues I had when designing the class. The first is by multi-classing into a single level barbarian without this feature would have made yourself a better luchador. The second is that small sized characters would be at a mechanical disadvantage compared to a medium sized creatures as a small creature wouldn't be able to grapple anything bigger than medium size. With this feature you can play a goblin, halfling, or gnome and still body slam with the best of them. On top of this I wanted to ensure that you would be able to live out a fantasy of slamming giants, terras, dragons, or any other humongous monster a DM will throw your way. Personas are the name of the subclasses. They start off at third level and you pick up more features at 6th, 11th, and 15th level. The idea behind the persona is you don a mask and fuse with the power for various forces to build up your legend. I'll get into the themes of the subclasses and their play style later in the video. Smack talk is meant to convey all those trash talking promos wrestlers do but also have an in combat benefit. With your bonus action you can attempt to taunt an enemy and if successful they have disadvantage on attacking anyone else but you. This feature does help you play into the frontline role helping you keep an enemy stuck on you. When extra attack comes online it helps with mixing up your attack action allowing you to grapple shove and attack all in the same turn. It's really a game changer allowing you to set the pace in combat. Reversal is meant to allow you to turn a grapple or shove made against you around on your enemy. If an enemy attempts to grapple or shove you and you beat them in that contest you can use your reaction to make a check against them and try to grapple or shove them in return. Fuerza is just a power upgrade to keep your unarmed strikes relevant in the game. It's just like the upgrade Monk receives. Aguas is named after slang. It means to watch out for danger and that's what this ability does. Now you will have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see or hear. This is another way to convey the luchador's agile athletics. Rapido continues to convey the agility aspect of the luchador. You add your charisma modifier to your initiative increasing your chance of going ahead in combat. Importantly you now generate an additional lucha dice when you roll for initiative. Making sure you can start off combat by firing off a signature move that costs 2 lucha die. At 10th level and 15th level you gain an additional die. One of the biggest fantasies surrounding the luchador is the acrobatic maneuvers they pull off. While I do have signature moves to play out that fantasy, I wanted something in its core kit that emboldens a player to actually try and pull that fantasy off. This is where high flyer comes in. If you jump before successfully attacking, grappling or shoving a creature, you take no fall damage and the attack deals an extra 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 5 feet you fell before making the attack. This also acts as a power spike and forces a player to look around and use the battlefield environment around them. Si se puede is meant to make a player feel like they are kicking out of a pinfall to continue the match. This feature is a last ditch effort ability to keep you standing at the cost of your lucha dice pool. If you drop to zero hit points while you have a lucha die and don't die outright, you can spend all your lucha dice to drop to one hit point instead. Valiente is a defensive feature that is meant to play into the idea of fearlessness that encompasses the luchador fantasy. It's a solid feature for a melee martial class as it will protect them from being charmed or frightened, especially at the higher tiers of play where spell casting effects are plentiful. Finishing move provides players more power behind their favorite signature moves. By now, a player will have a few select signature moves that is part of their routine combo. This feature is meant to convey the fantasy of luchadores having staple maneuvers they are known for. You choose two signature moves you know, and whenever you perform one of those signature moves, instead of rolling the damage die, you just max out the damage you would deal instead. Last but not least is King of the Ring. King of the Ring is the total embodiment of being a luchador champion. This capstone will have you generate lucha die just for attempting to attack, grapple, or shove a creature, and you immediately start off with combat with five lucha dice, which will allow you to fire off big subclass signature move like features or combo off and attack your enemies with multiple signature moves from the get go. Alright, here's a quick overview of signature moves. There are currently a total of 20 options to choose from. Instead of signature moves being like the Battlemaster Fighter's maneuvers, I took inspiration from the Sorcerer's Meta Magic. And just like how those options alter the spells you cast, signature moves will add effects on top of your successful unarmed strikes, grapples, and shoves. Each signature move has a state based action to trigger them in addition to successful attack actions. In some instances, enemies will need to be knocked prone, or you will need to move a set amount of movement or jump to be able to use a signature move. In addition to this, the only limit to the amount of signature moves you can perform in a turn depends on how much much lucha dice you have. Each signature move has a set cost with the cheapest option costing 2 dice with the most expensive costing 4. The rest of the moves you expect to be there are there. Clothesline, Dropkick, Power Slam, Hurricane Rana, and Body Splash, they're all there. Now let's take a look at the subclasses. Each subclass has a luchador have their mass powered by different forces that are in the various fantasy realms, while also paying tribute to professional wrestling, lucha libre, and Mexican culture. There are a total of 4 subclasses to choose from, with more to come in the future. The first subclass is Mask of the Glory Seeker, which is your vanilla or default luchador option. Inspired by class 
classic luchadores like El Santo and Mil Mascaras, this subclass is all about seeking to be a champion, whether it's in the ring or in the hearts of the people. Your power comes from striving to be the best and attempting to accomplish heroic deeds to build a legend. This subclass is meant to be easy to pick up and just play the class. All the features double down on the core play style of the class. You will pick out an enemy from the group and control them, either taking them out yourself or keeping them held down until your party can swoop in. The second subclass is the Mask of Tooth and Claw, which will have your luchador go primal as they become empowered by the spirits of the wild. This subclass is inspired by various wrestlers with animal motifs. The Mask of Tooth and Claw changes your play style slightly, wanting you to be a bit more of a skirmisher. You will want to rely on hit and run tactics, knocking your enemies prone, attacking them, then backing away to do it again. In addition, your out of combat roles expanded to allow you to play the party scout, able to utilize those heightened animal senses. Next is the Mask of the Feathered Serpent subclass, which is inspired by the Aztec and Mayan Feathered Serpent Gods. This subclass will grant you wind inspired ability gifted to you by the winged serpent gods through your mask. One of the weaknesses of the luchador is not having any sort of ranged option. With this subclass, this weakness is mitigated as you will be able to use the wind to control the battlefield. Being powered by the winds also enhances your ability to jump so you can double down on the high flying athletic fantasy of the luchador. The mask of the great titan is the last subclass which turns you into an undead powered juggernaut having you don a mask energized with necromantic energy. This subclass is inspired by luchador L.A. Barca and wrestlers like the undertaker. With this subclass you will be a brute slamming your enemies into the earth to desecrate the battlefield. Your necromantic powered attacks will help you control the area around you while also making you a sturdier tank. With that said, thank you all for your patience and continued support of the Luchador. If you want to check it out, there is a full preview of the entire class on the DMs Guild. If you have any questions regarding the class, drop them in the comment section or hop into the Dungeoneers Pack Discord. I look forward to answering them. For the links to the Luchador and the Discord, you can find them in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.